<clears throat> We're going to go over to YouTube. Ooh, the Cybertruck is out. Cybertruck is in New York. Uh, YouTube Studio. I don't know why I got to monetize it every time, but I do. Content. Live. I don't think there's an option in OBS. I need to figure it out, but um, here we'll go over here to YouTube as well, and we'll go to your videos. <clears throat> comments there we go I can show that one wah, 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 wah. <clears throat> okay morning mark we're gonna go live chat I'm gonna turn on do not disturb because I get a bunch of people texting me and I don't want Everybody to get that annoying ding. I'm long Apple, so I have iMessage. Okay, hit that thumbs up button. Uh, spy. Hey, button hook. Button hook. Button hook on spy. Um, I wish I could share my phone screen. I may. Let's say scans. We're going to go over to the scanner. I got to get done quickly today. Uh, oh, come on. Market scanner. Uh, here, we're going to go. Um, yeah, what are we going to do? YouTube. And then, let's see. Uh, we're gonna switch. Oh, come on. I don't want YouTube TV. Okay. We're going to do this. Copy link. Going to go over to Twitter. <clears throat> and we're going to post. Do, 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 do. Join me live on YouTube. Oh, look at that. Oh, we got some bouncers. Uh, whoop, whoop. Do, do, do. got that <clears throat> by the way mark since you're the only one here look at this that i mean 10 ton nuke is the dude's name <laughs> short tesla short amazon short apple short it all it's all going down for a while is there a uh more logical comment from a man with 10 ton nuke as his uh as his uh username Let's see, brokerage, no. Okay, covered call ETFs. <clears throat> um, let's see. Energy names. Wah, wah, wah. <clears throat> oh, man. NXE. This one's an interesting one. They just had their earnings. E. Energy. Okay, let's look at levered ETFs. Um, low cost Vanguard. Nothing. Spider sectors. Nothing. I mean, here's, you know, we'll, we'll look at the spider sectors. 
Uh, not owned. There's got to be something in not owned that shows up. GBTC. <clears throat> Trades at a 13% discount. Uh, which means, okay, let's go over to Seeking Alpha. <clears throat> and, oh, there's my Amazon delivery. I, I got to tell you, freaking um, Amazon, they're amazing. I ordered something at 10 o'clock last night. It's here now. And it was free. Um... This was, I thought I saw, yeah. There we go, okay. This is the article that I wanted to put in um, about GBTC. Oh, and the dogs are making noise. Okay, so we've got GBTC. I mean, this is, it's trading at a 13% discount to... Um, Oh, don't hit our mailboxes. What does she have as? Oh, it's a courier service. Huh. That just delivered that. Um, you can see GBTC. I mean, we'll, we'll go over that on the... the Let's see. Let's go. You know what? We're going to do ARKK because it does anything. We'll do all ARK funds. Hold on. What noise am I hearing? Somebody have the hiccups? SL. I don't like that one. That chart. No. Um, okay. Let's look at the Dow. Futures were up. I mean, the Dow futures. I don't know what Dow Dow stock, which of the 30, was soaring this morning, but it was. Hoofa. Um, scan, NASDAQ. Let's go to the S&P. There we go. Okay. Let's see about the 65-minute. There's not much. I mean, that's NXE, and you know, again, you got just mm, core portfolio. BLX, UNH, Uber, Meta, and Disney. Okay, so I got enough to talk about. There is quite a bit to talk about. Um, gonna open. Morning, Scott. Open that up. Move this back to the end. Oh, Amazon just notified me. <clears throat> We're going to move that to the end. We're going to move this. And... Unity software. Oh. Where is, let's go to Twitter. And we'll go to TrendSpider. Is there any bigger grifter than, than Chamath? The guy's a billionaire, and if he's not a billionaire, he is one of the, the richest people in, in the world, um, by far. I mean, he's got a private plane that, you know, he lends out to other billionaires. 
Um, okay, I don't see. I don't see the A. We're going to have to go on threads. There we go. Okay. We're going to copy. Copy the link. And we'll go here. Okay. Uh, we'll move that there. And then social requests. And then I've got the GBTC. Okay. Uh, we're going to take this down. We're going to take that down. We're going to hold the newsletter up. Okay, let's go back to strategy tester. Go to the four hour, run the four hour, and wow, TSM SM is up two percent, SMCI up one percent, uh, Nvidia. Let's see, because usually that one's in. Yeah, it's point seven percent. Devon, I mean Devon just tanked after earnings, but it's on the rise again. I mean this one. It teases us constantly. <laughs> Doesn't have confirmation. Wouldn't get in, but uh, it's up at forty four sixty five, which is you know almost confirmation, but not quite. Still negative. I mean, just I don't know why, but that one's a solid one. Uh, let me look at one that Cornet. What the hell is Cornet? Oh, a retail trader's dream, I bet. Let's say Cornet. Cornet Digital. Yep, 786 million bucks, 770, yeah. Average target price, 26. Recent downgrades, upgrade, upgrade. 29. We'll go and look at that one in Seeking Alpha as well. Okay, hold on. You can't hear me? Can anybody else hear me? Hold on. 29. I can hear me on uh my thing, Scott. Let me say. Let me let you know. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, sweet. Christian can hear me. Scott, I think you just need to reset, reload. Is that the sound you make with a gun? Reload. Um, let's see. We're going to look at QQQ. close down do we're gonna move that we've got that you know what I can close these down because we'll close those down there we go okay we've got two <clears throat> 
Um, okay, now I've got everything. Uh, let me move back up to the top. Okay. I'm going to start recording now. Because I think I've got everything that I want. Two things happened. Um, yeah, I'm going to move that over there. Going to keep that open. Sweet. Sweet. Okay. Um... Dude, Big Tree sent me stuff. Man, Mint is going away. <clears throat> okay. Um. Okay, let's start this. Let me just grab a thing of water. Because I'm probably going to have to, you know, bathroom, <clears throat> bathroom break on this one. If you guys didn't know, I know there's seven people watching. There's not a ton because I usually get on a little bit later. But I I have had a life changing experience drinking three glasses of water when I wake up in the morning. Um, it's amazing. Uh, skin feels better. Um, I I feel like I have more energy. Uh, I definitely eat less in the morning. The only downside is, uh, and one of the things, and you know maybe it's TMI, but I wanted to uh, stop peeing in the middle of the night. And so I read an article that said, hey, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Christian, I'll go over that. But but I, I read an article that said, hey, if you drink three glasses of water in the morning and stop drinking water at 830 at night, um, you, you, you know, logically, you'll just kind of pee less. And it worked. Honestly, it worked. Um, so now I got to uh, work on getting the sugar out of my system. But and the hair is probably going to change over the weekend. By the way, just so you're aware, um, I may come back with a completely shaved head on Monday. Just so you know. Um, but yeah, <laughs> shut the fucking door. <laughs> um, no, what's Celtic salt? Salt. I need to. I'll, I'll write that in my notes. Look up Celtic salt i'll google it for sure um yeah and I, I know i'm dehydrated i know for a fact that that you know i'll go on hikes and i won't drink water for for you know six seven hours and my body's just gotten used to being um dehydrated shit my thumb i think is getting infected again um, okay, let's do this. Do do. <clears throat> I'm going to hit record. Good morning. It is Friday, November 10th. Uh it is the day um after Jerome Powell became a meme. So, we'll talk about that one, but I wanted to start off with just kind of how my day starts. Uh my day starts at between 5 and 7. I sit in bed with my phone reading. Usually I read a bunch of articles that I want to share, a uh, bunch of things about the market, and the TV is on in the background. Usually I have CNBC. Today I saw Ron Barron on CNBC, who I, I really like Ron Barron. He's a huge Tesla bull. Uh, he bought the CEO of a company named Figs, uh, which is one of his investments as well. And so I was sitting there in bed and I said, you know, let me look up this company. And, and if you guys know, you go on to uh, FinViz on your computer, it's great. But what's not great is when you go on FinViz on Safari or Chrome on your phone. It's horrible. Um, and, and so let, let me just look up figs. Um, I, I went on Seeking Alpha's, uh, not the website, but their app. Their app is amazing. Uh, he was talking about figs. I got it up quickly. Um, the tools on the mobile app, perfect. Graphs, all of this stuff is available in an easy-to-read format on the app on Seeking Alpha. I loved it. Financials, charts of stock performance, 
made me realize I don't want to invest in this stock that Ron Barron said, oh my God, we're going to trip you know, five times our money in 10 years. And, and he's sure about it. I think he's talking his book. Um, everything that came up on my phone, I could read it. Even if, so here's what I'm urging you to do. Even if you don't sign up for the premium version, I would say go over to my link tree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash daily stock pick. Click this second link. Don't sign up for the premium. If you don't want the premium, it's not that big of a deal. There are so many things on Seeking Alpha that are free. Sign up for an account. Then go and download the app. The app, absolutely game-changing for me. Um, it, it has been just, you know, the, this morning reminded me how much I use this app. I really, really like the app. So I would say go on, if you want to sign up for um, for Seeking Alpha, this includes a $50 off coupon right here. Uh, it's the best deal that they've got going on one of the affiliates. Uh, but it, it, it really, really is a solid, solid app. I was shocked at how good of an app. And and Figs, I just looked at the chart, didn't want to, you know, understand, didn't really want to look at it. Then I looked at their income statements. I looked at all of that, their valuation. Uh, all of this is outlined in the app in such a easy to read format. I was using Finviz, going in and, and just expanding Finviz and looking at that stuff. And I realized a couple of weeks ago, just the, the Seeking Alpha app is so much better. So I would urge you, go on, sign up, um, and, and get just get the app. Um, that's exactly what I would say. Now, uh, let's go back to, to the markets. Uh, like I said, Jerome Powell turned into a meme. <laughs> uh, if you just Google, close the fucking door. Uh, you will see Jerome Powell. Uh, a couple of uh, uh, environmental groups jumped up there on stage, interrupted his presentation. He got really pissed, um, which Jerome Powell never gets really pissed. And he, they basically shut, they shut down the feed. And they, and, and then you can hear, you know, there's no video, but the audio was left on. And he said, "Close the fucking door." <laughs> um, his, his, this move the markets, not that close the fucking door mark thing, but he said they they may not have done enough to keep inflation under control. That moved the markets, okay? It was a little bit move, nothing huge. Then what happened um, was the bond, bond auction started, and the bond auction was an absolute disaster. Um, and I'm looking up this one, U.S. Treasury, yeah. The bond auction was an absolute disaster, what happened? The reason the auction was considered failed because there seemed to only have been a few buyers of the bonds, leading to a long tail when the average bid price is much lower than the bond itself. The government came out afterwards and said the auction, uh, ha there was a hack in China that prevented one of the major treasury buyers from purchasing bonds. The 30-year bond auction drew 4.77, which is huge, which was above the, the pre-sale numbers by five basis points. In other words, the auction uh, performed much worse than it was expected. This was perceived as a sign that inflation expectations still elevated over the long term. Furthermore, this seems to be a yet another sign that higher for longer is the new normal. Bond markets continue to drive everything in this market. Understand the 10-year, if we go over to Seeking uh, Alpha, and I just look at the 10-year, and, and we can look at a, a, a short version of this. It's trading like a, a penny stock. Um, let me just type it in. 10-year bond. Um, there we go. <clears throat> it's trading like a penny stock. The volatility is not healthy in this. And if you just look at the one day of this one, this is the crazy part of this 10-year bond. At 4.6, now you're down at 4.5. Expect today to be up. People will start showing up and buying. Uh, you can read some of the articles on Seeking Alpha about the 10-year, why it's happening. Um, the Chinese largest bank said it was hit by a ransomware attack. Um, just understand, bond rates are continuing to drive this market. <clears throat> with, with everything being overbought, uh, I, I would tend to be short for the short term. Um, but, you know, if, if you want to read this article on the, uh, the, the U.S. Treasury hit, I... I don't know. I mean, do I believe it? I don't know. 
I, 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 I tend to not trust that when a bond auction goes bad, somebody tries to find some some reason for it, and and they they're blaming China. China is an easy easy target these days with some of these politicians. So I kind of take it with a grain of salt, but the reality of it is, eh, could be. It, it very well could be. Um, so I, I don't know exactly what went on yesterday with the cybersecurity stuff. I mean, you know, it, it's all just a guess, but bond auction, you know, again, it's it's driving the market. Um, did you all see my, my video yesterday? TSLQ <laughs> was up 5%. Great, great call yesterday on this one. It was up 5%. In pre-market, you're up 0.29. Tesla's still weak. And if we go and we look at the Tesla chart over here, you can see the cues, by the way. We're starting to get the button hook. I always talk about the button hook. And you can see the button hook where the algorithm gets you out. You're seeing just, a, well, just what we saw in October. You kind of bounced up over the 200 day. Everybody got excited. October's going to be the month. Uh, you know, October's a huge, huge, great thing. Well, it's kind of doing the same thing. And we've always talked about that that we might be in a range. This might be the range. You might be coming back down under the 200-day on Qs, which is 367. Um, you know, again, Tesla is one of the big drivers of this. It was down. It's down 0.53. You're back down. We talked about it yesterday. Button hook forming. Um, it, the algorithm has not gotten you out. It will get you out probably very soon. If not today, uh, it will get you out. Uh, the MACD is under the oscillator. I just think they have some 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 tailwinds that are a little bit hard. Specifically, uh, Neo. I'm sorry, not Neo. Uh, the other uh, one of the other Chinese auto companies. Uh, they're kind of beating. You know, they they said, hey, there's weakness in China, but Li Auto, L I is is the symbol. I think L I Li Auto is the one that. Um, beat Tesla. They, they just delivered 100,000 cars. They're coming for Tesla. Tesla's been weak in China. China's going to drive this company. So I would say it's a little bit, you know, you don't want to get necessarily get into TQ, TSLQ um, for a long time, but I would say between 200 and two, uh, 210, it's not a bad place to get into TSLQ. Uh, long term, this stock has been hurt. You know, the shorts have been killed on this one. You're using the 200 day as your support long term. So I don't think that there's a huge de- uh, upside on TSLQ. I do think the Tesla long term, I think it'll be fine. I think they have some valuation issues to just work through. Um, but I think long term, it is absolutely fine. But that, that call yesterday, you're up 5%. I, I don't know that I'd necessarily get out of TSLQ. Uh, I'd wait for, you know, maybe a 65 minute. Let's look at the 65 minute on six, uh, TSLQ because TSLQ, you're not even in in the four hour. Um, it was just a good call for yesterday because there was weakness in the downgrade. Uh, TSLQ, you're in at 37, 37.23 right now. And you have confirmation. You're starting to fill this gap. The gap goes up to 38.72. That's the 65 minute algorithm. And, and any of my algorithms, the four hour, anything, it's all in TrendSpider. If you sign up for TrendSpider, the Black Friday uh, deal is going on right now. What I really like about this Black Friday deal is that you have a monthly price option. So after seven free days, seven day free trial, you pay forty three forty five per month. You can sign up with the link in my link tree. Uh, if you want to prepay for the full year and take a seven day free trial, it's three hundred and eighty two bucks. That saves you about ten bucks a month. Gets you a couple of months for free. Now, if you want to get the best deal, skip the trial. If you know that you're going to use my uh, my algorithms, if you know you're going to use the scanners, go over here. It's two hundred ninety six bucks, so under three hundred dollars. Uh, between this and Seeking Alpha, I think you have the perfect technical and fundamental uh, view on the market with some premium additions, meaning tracking your portfolio in Seeking Alpha, uh, making sure that you read the articles in Seeking Alpha, that you don't you're not you know that you're not filled with ads. Um, in Seeking Alpha, and you have the technical portion of, of, of uh, TrendSpider. So TSLQ was yesterday. So, uh, one thing that I noticed yesterday, uh, and it was thanks to Bradley Ferguson, the, the stock market nerd, is SoFi. Uh, SoFi I've been talking about, they had their earnings. They ran up here from $6.88 all the way up to $8.20, and then we just tanked. 
and, and I think a lot of this has to do with the, um, the, the, the student loan thing. But if we go over here to, uh, to Finviz and, and we look, the average target price is 941 for SoFi. You've got an upgrade just on October 30th with a $7 price target. Good move to get to that price target. But what I noticed is there's a couple of insider buys. Nothing huge, nothing huge at all. But the CFO bought $100,000 worth. The CEO bought $300,000 worth at six seventy eight. dollars Now, today, you're trading at six eighty six. Is this the start of the button hook? Understand that if you want to try and time things, this is where you try and time things. You try and get it just under the nine day, but you've got to put your stop losses in. Just because it's starting to turn doesn't mean it's going to turn. You have to understand there were plenty of times right here. You could have tried to time it here at 748. You went all the way down to $7. Now, if you bought here at 748 and you held for a couple of weeks, you did fine. If you just sold when you lost confirmation, you did fine. You absolutely did fine. So understand you want to find these stocks that either have a good volatility. Well, let's look at the four hour. That's the 65 minute, but let's look at the four hour. Um, See, you're out. And 738, it just got you out with a little loss. You try and time it, like I said, on the 65 minute. Um, it, it doesn't have confirmation right now. In pre market, you're at 686. So take a look at that stuff. It, it, it matters. Understand getting into a stock, you have to have a plan. I get too many questions about people should I sell? Should I buy? Have a plan. Understand that there's a system to this. And if you don't have a system, Get a system. Go over here to Savvy Trader, right down here on my um, on my uh, link tree. You go to Savvy Trader. Savvy Trader is absolutely free. Start documenting your uh, your your trades. The Trading Desk. <clears throat> this was huge yesterday. Um, now the the Trading Desk is a company. Um, let me see. Did I write down their their thing? No, I guess I didn't write down their their actual thing. But here's the Trading Desk. Oh. God, why does this do this to me? Um, it slid 28% after light Q4 for sales forecast. Uh, they Their guidance came in light, slightly below consensus, largely because the transitory cautionness from advertisers in certain verticals, such as U.S. auto and media entertainment due to strikes. So they guided lower based on strikes. That's, it seems a little bit fishy to me, uh, and if you don't know the trading desk, they basically do some online advertising. If you watch uh, streaming services and you get ads, these are the guys that place those ads. They have um, threatened Google. They're the only ones who have built a rival to Google's online ad business. Um, you know, others like Amazon and and Microsoft have some of that, but trading desk is is probably the best um, one. And I say that with a little bit of uh, hey. Uh, you know, one of my a family friend used to be the CFO of this company. So I knew a little bit about it. Uh, it was one of Motley Fool's big picks. Um, the problem with this stock, and, and right now you're trading at 58. I think 55 is your floor. Uh, 55 is your floor. But understand, here's the thing. While I say 55 is your floor, look at this. Right here at your 200 day, it's 61. 50 right here when I saw this uh this golden cross right here it's about 55 and, and so that golden cross you still have a positive moving 50 day but this is going to start moving downward the 50 day and it might get a death cross on the weekly what's happening to this one is as they started to uh give a, a slower forecast they're they're basically growing going forecasting that they're going to grow less and the PE on this one is crazy, 297. Even the forward PE is 54. So when you hear people talk about valuation, the growth needs to be there. So anything other than, hey, we're going to continue to grow at 40% per quarter is going to bring a stock like this down. This is a huge company. So a 25, 28% move in this, it's a $37 billion market cap. It's enormous. Uh, it is up 71% year to date. This one was a $100 stock. You're trading at, at, at 76. So uh, the average price target, 81. 
Right now in pre-market, you're at 58. If you think that this could be one of the the, the big online advertisers' winners, I think this one's worthy of getting into. I've held this one. I've traded this one. I don't currently own it. I'm thinking about getting back in. I really like this because if they said, hey, the weakness was really in the strikes uh, and every other advertising business is actually doing well, I think Trading Desk, one of two things. Either people have moved away from Trading Desk and are placing their ads with Amazon, uh, with Google, with Microsoft, or some other platform, or uh, they did. They just saw a temporary slowdown, and next next quarter, you'll see a huge one. Now, it was $0.33 cents per share. You can see they're growing. $0.38 cents per share, $0.23 cents per share, 28 and they, they continued to say the advertising uh, market was strong. This is where they said the advertising market in Q4 is going to be weak. So I I think that one's an interesting one. I think if you want to uh, invest in it, I would go over to Seeking Alpha. I would do a little bit of research on their fundamentals. Understand it is still a risky stock. Uh, Now, Unity Software. Uh, Unity Software plummets after earnings. Uh, Essentially what they did, they, they have a new CEO because their old CEO passed away. Um, They didn't give guidance. But the, the interim CEO promised to change strategy. This was an interesting uh, article to read. I don't know anything about Unity Software. I've never invested in it. What I do think is, is funny, it's down 12%. This back here just in September was a $37 stock. Do I think that that has got some opportunity to come back? I am less, less interested in this one than I am trading desk. Uh, they are not making money. It's a nine billion dollar company. Year to date, it's down eleven percent. Average target price thirty seven. You're trading at twenty five. I think you're going to start to see some downgrades. Even Macquarie put a um, uh, outperform to neutral twenty dollar price target. Just a few, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Piper Sandler out overweight to neutral with a thirty dollar price target. Again, in pre market, you're at twenty two dollars. So I, I, I think they're, they're right in seeing the weakness. I would probably wait on that one. I just thought it was interesting because it's down so much and they have an interim CEO. I thought that was interesting. Uh, DraftKings. Let's talk about DraftKings. Okay, I'm going to pause it for one second. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> huh, I'll have to look up Celtic Soth. How do you feel about CDR- CDRE? I bought for earnings rising trend since June. Uh, I'll look at that one after I do the podcast, John. <clears throat> Unless it's, what is it? Let me see. I do have a bunch of social aerospace and defense. I mean, it's a defense. You're going to win. There's two wars going on. Um, yeah. Initiate coverage. Nobody's covering it. So, um, $30 of resistance. See the comment chart below for my analysis. At this point, it's always important to watch these things because the shares will either reverse lower or break out higher. Either direction can bring some nice profits. Now, I'm not one to buy options, but if there was ever a good place. <laughs> I mean, 
This, I think, says it all. Nobody's buying it, insider. They're selling at 26. Not huge money. President sold, you know, 2589 before earnings, August 30th. I mean, they were selling before the, the Israeli war. I'll look at it in a little bit, John. <clears throat> Let me finish up with DraftKings. Okay. <clears throat> DraftKings. Look at this chart. I mean, this chart's got a, a button hook. We're kind of losing. I have this in my trading portfolio. So if I go over here and we go to Savvy Trader, you'll see I have a, a small position. I've added, I think, a little bit. I don't put a lot of my ads in the trading portfolio. Um, a, as I add to stuff, I just do usually the initial buy. Or if I get out completely, I'll just sell, you know, put to get out. Here's the, Here it is. DraftKings, let's t see where we are. We're up 22%. So I've made 1000 bucks in this one, $1,800 just off the original. I've added some. Uh, the, the question is, do I hold on to it? I think I might sell this. And, and the reason I might sell this is because I do believe that $30 is the, uh, the, the, the line to buy. Here's the thing. We're in football season. They have an investor day next week. They beat their numbers on their last earnings. They expect to be cash flow positive early next year. Uh, I still like it to sell it up because I think I can buy it under 30. And I think this little downturn in pre-market, we're up 0.78. Remember, the 10-year bond is still going. It, it, it just shot down. So I, I don't know 100%, but look at this one back here in August. What what did we hit? 34.49 was the high. Over here, um, you've hit 36.37. I mean, at 34.83, I'm kind of thinking, okay, maybe we get back to this 31 point and I can make 10% by just selling it and then rebuying it. The MACD is way up here. We're completely overbought it with an RSI at 69. Could it go up? Yes. I'll probably get out of this today. I'll probably get out of this today and just look at it. If you want to see my trades, sign up for Savvy Trader, sign up for the trading portfolio, sign up for the core portfolio. That's the way you track this stuff. I'll probably sell out of this today, take a nice 22% profit um, and just, you know, maybe buy it back uh, in, in the coming months. It, this is a stock. They're not cash flow positive. I like them. I think they're making, they're going to change the world of betting. There's some competitors coming in. Again, it's costing them a lot of money to get new betters in. I like the stock. I just think I can uh, sell it here for a nice profit and then get out. Uh, Eli Lilly, uh, weight loss drugs, GLP-1. This is a big one. Uh, they got some some uh, news yesterday that uh, AstraZeneca is partnering with a Chinese company and they're going to have some competition. This one went under 600. I think under 600, I think you get it. The problem is the valuation. We don't know what the actual market is going to be for these GLP ones. Novo Nordisk is the other one. You can see the PE of uh, PE of Eli Lilly 109, forward PE of 48. Novo Nordisk uh, is the, the symbol is NVO. Uh, this is not in the core portfolio, but it's got a, a lower PE. This one might be a better buy than Lilly. I have Lilly in the, the core portfolio because they do have uh, a, 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 just a much more, many more drugs than, than, uh, than Novo Nordisk. Uh, NVO has a market cap of 337. Lilly has a market cap of 561 billion. So the, the, the cadre of drugs that, that Eli Lilly has is a little bit more, it's less of a speculative than Novo Nordisk. Novo Nordisk, I think over the weekend, they're expecting FDA um, approval. This one could pop. You've had some double tops here. It does look like 103, 105 is, is the top. Your 52-week high is 104, so you're only 3% off that. You're 47% up. The average target price is only 103. You're trading at 100. So the upside is not huge. It's not huge. Uh, but you can see the, this initiate Argus, uh, October 2nd initiated 110. Eh, 
this one might be it might be a good one to get into. There's no insider trading. I don't have anything about this. Let's go over to Seeking Alpha and let's look at some of the. Um, let's look at Lily. We'll, first, we'll look at Lily and uh, we'll see some of the, uh, the 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 quant ratings and things like that for Lily. Uh, Eli Lily, no stop. <clears throat> Man, I love Apple, but I wish I could turn this off for certain websites. Uh, L L Y, the autocomplete, um, because it just seems to mess me up specifically in Seeking Alpha. You can see rating summary, Seeking Alpha analyst, 3.4 hold. Wall Street, buy at 4.13. That's not, I, I'd take the Seeking Alpha and the, and the quant at, at, at a better rate than the Wall Street. You can see one year you're up 62%, five year you're up 426%. Um, let's see if they have Nova Nordisk as a peer. Let's see if, if that's one of the peers. No, they don't have Nova Nordisk. Let's look at charting because what I want to look at is I'm going to look at Novo Nordisk NVO because has this one, has this one appreciated like Lily? Uh, let's see. Yeah. One year, Nova Nordisk is up 75%. Lily's up 62%. Three year, uh, Nova Nordisk is only up 194. Eli Lily up 315. Five year, Nova Nordisk up 345%. Lily up 426. So I think Nova Nordisk, if you're trading uh, GLP ones, I think Nova Nordisk might be a better option for you to trade. Just understand you're running into 52 week highs. You're running into the 52-week high of 104. And, and you can see 104 has been a, a pretty good resistance level. So the weekend might see a pop. I like this one. I'm still a fan of Amgen. I think when Amgen comes out with their weight loss drug, I think you see this one really, really pop. Uh, they have an uh, ex-dividend date coming up November 16th. GLP-1s will be the future. Uh, I, I really, really honestly think that they are probably the next AI. Um, let's take a look at this one, uh, because we did have a question, uh, about, um, uh, AMC a, a few weeks ago. Somebody said, Hey, can you tell me when a short squeeze of AMC will co come? I don't think a short squeeze is going to come because here's the thing. Uh, the second you get a short squeeze, a AMC has filed to sell up to $350 million worth of common stock from time to time. That's the problem with short squeeze is if they have shares on the sidelines, if you start to get a short squeeze, understand they can just sell $350 million worth of common stock, which will uh, provide the shorts the ability to buy the stock in, and, and get out of their shorts. There's no way you can short squeeze a company that has approval to actually sell an enormous amount of stock after uh you know after it's been out there so amc uh I, I i'm sorry it is not worthwhile getting into amc there is nothing worthy of amc amc right now is at eight dollars and 71 cents i wouldn't expect it to go up in pre-market you're down 1.49 percent um I, there's nothing positive about this stock so for retail traders i just don't think it's worthwhile Stay out of it. That would be my uh, my guidance. Uh, let's take a look. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, Jeffrey Cure on, on YouTube? What are your thoughts on MQ? New way for digital uh, credit card transactions. Let's look at MQ. Because this one was interesting. I took a look at it because I wasn't aware of this. But it's Marketa. Uh, I think it's a new company. We can take a look at it weekly on this one just to see. It popped with earnings. So on, honestly, the, the pop in earnings probably something to stay away from. But you can see it, it has been a dog. Uh, it started out with the IPO back in 2021. Uh, you're back here at $25 or so. You're trading at $6.12. Right now in pre-market, it's down 5% at $5.83 because again, it had that pop in earnings and you're getting the any reaction in the market is an overreaction. You got this gap from $5.36 to $5.69. I would say that's probably going to see a pullback. It's losing money. We can go over here to MQ, uh, to Finviz and type in MQ. $3.25 billion. So it's it's a decent sized company, not crazy. 958 employees. 
Average target price, $6.81. It has been covered this entire year. There's a mix, some downgrades, some upgrades. Um, I don't know necessarily about the, the positive outlook, I can tell you that you know the director Sylvie and uh, Sylvan Godfrey uh, bought 1.1 million dollars worth at five dollars and eighty eighty eight cents. So there's a mix of buys, not a ton of sales. Uh, the only sale came from Martha Cummings, who looks like she um, she optioned an exercise exercised an option and then sold out for a hundred and ten thousand dollars. That's not a crazy one. So it does believe that the management nest does believe in this company. Uh, they might believe that it's undervalued. Year to date, you're only up 0.16. Performance over one year, uh, you're down 10.26. So one week, you're up 12%. Uh, six months, you're up 33%. So the volatility in this one, I would say, hey, trade it. It's not making money. So higher for longer is going to hurt this company. You're seeing the death cross right here, November 1st, but the 50 days now moving positive. If uh, three days from now, I'd say by next Tuesday, if you hold 572, this one might start to actually uh, move higher. Um, the, 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 the price to sales, it's expensive, 4.27. That's expensive for a credit card company. We can go over to Visa, um, you know, a, a proven one. Their price to sales is 15. So for a proven company that's not going out of business, that is making a ton of money, Visa and MasterCard are at 15. Let's see. Let's see MasterCard. Um, those are the only two symbols that I know. Price to sales on MasterCard. Uh, wait. MasterCard is MA. Uh, MasterCard is price to sales is 14. So I, I for me, uh, the safety version, you know, this may be a boomer thing. I, I like what I read about Marquetta. I just don't like the stock. I think you trade it instead of own it. So, Jeffrey, hopefully that makes sense. Game Bread Boxer. I love that name. Uh, on uh, Spotify. What is going on with FMC? I've been watching it since about $100. It just keeps free falling. You seeing any value in there or is it just wishful thinking? Let's see FMC. I mean, that t- that kind of question takes a hell of a lot more uh, research than just kind of 30 seconds on the internet. But FMC Corporation, let's see what they do. FMC over here. I'll, I'll go over Seeking Alpha too, because Seeking Alpha will provide maybe a little bit better um, uh, visual sense into FMC. No, I don't want that. I want this. And let's see. The quant rating in FMC is strong sell. Uh, seeking Alpha Analyst. Warning FMC is at high risk of performing badly. Learn why. Uh, warning FMC, uh, has characteristics which have been historically associated with poor performing stock. FMC has negative earnings per share revisions and decelerating momentum when compared to other material stocks. So, uh, you can see, I mean, this is the benefit of seeking alpha. This is a paid version. So you'd probably have to pay to get in there and see it. Um, from from this one, I can see seeking alpha, seeking alpha analysts like it. I mean, here why FMC could fly once demand improves. Uh, if we go over here to seeking alpha or Finviz, you can see September thirteenth, dude bought what one hundred fifty one thousand worth. Looks like they you know a couple people bought bought big chunks uh, at one fifteen on May third. I mean that dude's down. If you bought four hundred seventy six thousand dollars at one fifteen. And you're trading at 50. That dude's lost a lot of money in this one. Uh, but demand is down. I don't necessarily. Material stocks are funny because, like Cleveland Cliffs, um, you know, Cleveland Cliffs iron ore. I mean, it it just it's trading higher. Let's look at the long term of FMC. Where was it prior to the pandemic? I always like to go back to prior to the pandemic. Where was it? Yeah, this was ninety six dollar stock. I don't know what's going on with it. I think you're wishful thinking. Remember, here's what you have to remember. If you've been watching the, uh, if you've been watching it since 100, uh, hopefully you haven't been investing in one since 100, because once you start to see this this loss of of confirmation on the nine day on the long term, and you have a gap and its earnings and its demand, I mean, you can see. Look at the earnings per share. They're at 44 cents earnings per share. Whereas they were at $2 when they were a $100 company. This is 100% just an earnings reaction. 
The, the stock isn't worth what the company is putting. The company's just not making money. So if a company is broken, don't invest in it. Don't think that just because it was $100 at one point, it's going to get back up there. They have to fix this. I'd rather see you not buy it at 50 and buy it at 75 on its way up to 100 and just miss that first $25. Don't time the bottom. Don't think that you're going to get some time. This is a broken company. So Game Bread Boxer, I'd say get the hell out. Understand it's out. Uh, Manuel from uh, Spotify. Ford has been quite cyclical in the past two years. UAW strike and earnings have reduced the share price to under $10. Is this an opportunity? I own a bunch of Ford, honestly. Um, I think Spotify gave me a bunch. I wouldn't buy it. I'm a bigger Tesla fan. Right now in the four hour, you have no confirmation. This one, they're they're going to deal with higher costs. Um, they have said, that, you know, the Biden administration doesn't want them to stop producing electric vehicles, but these guys want to stop producing electric vehicles. They can't compete with Tesla. Tesla is reducing the price, reducing their margins. A- a- again, if Tesla starts to increase their margins, these guys will probably start to go up because if Tesla is able to uh, raise their price and keep demand at a good level, then these guys actually have a chance, a fighting chance of actually uh, competing. Right now, they don't have a chance of competing in the electrical vehicle space because Tesla is so far ahead with the battery technology. That that's the key in this is the batteries are costing these guys too much. Rivian's losing what forty thousand dollars per vehicle, uh, thirty thousand dollars per vehicle uh, that they sell. Uh, Lucid three hundred thousand dollars they're losing per vehicle. So, you know, understand this is a capital intensive business. Higher for longer is going to hurt the car companies. Uh, Elon talked about it incessantly on the the earnings call where higher for longer is going to affect the the demand for Teslas. So it's going to affect the demand for Ford. I don't think that $9.71 is an absolute buy for this company. Uh, Look pre-pandemic. Pre-pandemic, this was a $9 company. What makes you think it's a 100% better company now other than Jim Cramer having Jim Farley's uh, text number? That's where this one went up. Jim Cramer started pumping this one. Uh, I have been in a Ford F1 Lightning. I, I was not a fan. I thought it was more plasticky than even a Tesla. So I, I'm just not a fan of this. I, you know, the stock, if we go over here to Finviz and we look at the stock, I mean, you can t- type in Ford or GM. The PE is six. The forward PE is five. They have a 6.19% dividend. At some point in time, that gets cut because they can't keep up with the amount that they just paid the workers to get over this strike. They can't keep that dividend up. They're going to cut it. So year to date, you're down 12%. I have no hope in this. I'm not a huge Ford fan. I am a a fan of trading this one. If you want to trade it, absolutely trade it. Don't try and time the bottom. Right now on the four hour, you have absolutely no hope of this one coming back. Uh, It is so far below that nine day. The nine day is right at about 10.02. You're at 9.331, 9.71. Sorry, Uh, what's that? 3% down, 4%? Wait for it. Just wait for it. You got a gap from the earnings from 10.98 up to 11.30. I think at some point you start to get there. The death cross was the clear, clear indication right here. At, at, at August 22nd, the death cross happened and the stock was trading at $12. You wound up going up to the 200 day right here. And then you had the strike and it just kept going down. I would not invest in Ford. I would not invest in GM. Uh, Amachai, Amachai uh, asked about Cornet uh, from uh, from uh, Spotify. Cornet, I don't even know what these guys do. Cornet Digital. I think I looked this up on on Seeking Alpha. Um, I'm sorry, on uh, Finviz before. Cornet trading at 15. I mean, before earnings, it was trading at 13. They're not making money. They're losing money. I think in higher for longer, I think you have to be extremely careful. Uh, This one, year to date, you're down 31%. They're a market cap of $787 million. Super small. That is small in, in relative terms. Forward PE, 141. Uh, what do they do? Let's say Cornet is engaged in development, designing, manufacture, and marketing of industrial and commercial printing solutions for garment, <laughs> apparel, and textile industries. 
Um, so it's an industrial specialty retailer. Nothing excites me. There is nothing in in these financials that excites me. The average target price twenty six seventeen. Uh, Craig Hollum hold to buy twenty three dollar price target trading at fifteen. I'd rather have a company that's making money uh, that's trading at fifteen that has a higher price target. Uh, I mean, you know, Cleveland Cliffs, Cleveland Cliffs. Look at their price target of nineteen. They're trading at sixteen. It's about the same thing. They are making money. Again, you know, iron ore. These guys are making money. Look at the most recent upgrade to twenty-two dollars. So why would I want a cornet uh, other than volatility of cornet? That might make sense. Uh, one of the he also asked, or she also. I'm a shy. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing. Asked about uh, Bank of America. I'm a fan of Bank of America under thirty, but understand. Look at this. The 200-day is providing incredible resistance to every financial stock. Higher for longer hurts these guys. As you start to get, I mean, look, at this has been a good trade, 26.13 right now. Look at that one. I mean, you know, you got out, what, 29? You got your nice 10%, and then the MACD crosses down. Your ex-dividend date's coming up on November 30th. I think this is, I have this in the core portfolio. I own this. I own a good amount of this. What, sit fifty, sixty thousand dollars worth? I own a bunch of it. And I own it at about twenty nine. Cause I think thirty dollars is a solid price target for this one. Now you can trade it under thirty. I think you can buy it at any point in time under thirty. I don't think that you trade this one just for short term trading, though. I think you trade this one for you buy it, you find a good entry point. And then you just hold for at least a year. In my mind, that was the plan, and I'm still holding. I'm down on this one, not down too much, but my average price target, my my average uh, price is about 29. I was up on it. I was way up back here in July. Should have sold, but I didn't. As it goes under, I'm just adding more. So Bank of America, I think, is good. Uh, Sam from Facebook asked about Disney. Um, you think Disney could be a play or is the RSI just too high? You, you had your pop on earnings. The RSI right now is at 74. You're overbought. I'd say wait for it to go under 90. Right now it's at $90.10 in pre-market. Wait for it to come back and, and create a little bit of a gap. I think in the blink of an eye, you're going to start to, to, to c- cover this gap between 95 and 100. So I think you add to it. I, I again, I think you know they, they cut costs. I think it's a solid, solid play. They cut costs and, and they will start to make money. So I think it's a solid, solid play. Uh, I, I have Disney in the core portfolio. I am holding Disney. I think at about ninety eight, ninety nine dollars. I still think the one hundred dollar price target is, is a good one. I just don't think it's going to get there anytime soon. Understand, one of the main problems with Disney is the reduction in in cable. And, and so being a cable executive, I can tell you, and I'd say this all the time, ESPN was super expensive in the basic cable package. But Disney was so strong in their negotiating power that we had to put ESPN in the basic package. And people wanted it in the pay, basic package. But the 40% of people or 50% of people who never watched ESPN other than maybe one sporting event the $15 a month was not worth it to them. So Charter started fighting with them. Uh, they were able to reduce the cost. Uh, ESPN will go direct to consumer, but you won't have uh, 30, what 300 million people uh, in the U.S. paying $15 a month ever again. So they have to monetize things differently. That's the challenge of Bob Iger right now is reducing. Re- he, he's got reducing revenues on ESPN, but he's got to find other revenue streams to actually monetize that business. And most of the businesses, that's what they need to do. What they're doing with Hulu, I think is great. Mix it, you know, buy Hulu from Comcast, mix Hulu with Disney plus, you will immediately increase the, 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 the subscriber base and you become a streaming giant. Remember Hulu has live TV. So I think you absolutely 100% he's doing the right thing, cutting costs. It's still expensive, but understand this is a legendary company and you are trading at levels that you were trading pre-pandemic. I'm sorry, around around the pandemic. Uh, Here, COVID candles were 16% on the weekly period right here. This This was in the newsletter yesterday. 
Disney is making trading is trading at levels it was trading back in March 2020 when the world was shut down. No parks were open. They didn't even have a streaming service. So do I think it's a great play? I absolutely think it's a good play. Um, I, I just would be careful. I mean, again, I think uh, under 90 is probably a great price. I think uh, once you get to this $100 price, I think that's when the 50-day starts to turn. Um, so you've got to time this one a little bit. I just probably, you know, they had the the pop on their earnings, the higher volume. I'm just seeing it as, as a long-term play, nothing short. Uh, video comments yesterday, uh, well, this morning, uh, a, a user by the name of 10 Ton Nuke. Uh, and I don't know if you're a regular listener or you're a regular watcher on YouTube. I appreciate the comment. Uh, I am showing my response. Uh, nobody here says 10 ton nuke says short Tesla, short Amazon, short Apple, short it all. It's all going down for a while. Should we expect anything less from a, 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 a username 10 ton nuke? <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, yeah, yeah. here's a, this is what I responded. Nobody really knows. I've been a bull for years, uh, when there were plenty of bears and honestly over the past 30 years, uh, you know, 20, all the way from 1990. When 1990s were coming around, yeah, people were, were bearish as well. For 10 years, you made great money in the dot-com business. Then in 2000, it was the dot bomb when it immediately went down. You had to be aware that you were going to lose money. And as it was going down, you had to get out. You had to reallocate to different positions. It was clear and hopefully everybody, you know, people around that time were, were smart enough. It was difficult. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have all of the sites that you have today. You didn't have all the information. You didn't have online trading. So it was difficult back then. It's easy now. Uh, so when you understand that, that things are going south, get out. Just get out. Doesn't mean that your long-term positions you're going to time. I try not to short these stocks. Uh, right. I, I agree that caution is warranted, but stocks with solid earnings, growth, and cash flow will go positive. Just be careful taking shorts because over the past even five years, uh, you know, even after COVID, God, you know, what what happened this entire year when stuff was shut down? We can go back to the queues. Let's go back to the queues. We'll look at a long term because if, you, if you've shorted the queues o- over a, a long period of time, what happened? You've lost. I mean, you've just lost if you short over a long period of time. We can go back to a, a, let's go back to a quarterly and let's just go back to like the 2000s. If you've shorted this market uh, on a monthly basis, let's just go monthly instead. If you short this, this market on a monthly basis, you've lost money. Even if you, you know, you, you short in 2008 when you started to short back there, if you didn't get out and you didn't time things, you lost money. So just, just understand 10 ton nuke, (laughs) uh, the, the, the nuclear warfare that you're, you're talking about probably hasn't come. So be careful. I agree, though. You know, hey, be careful in this market um, because you do get catalysts every day in this market. It's a different kind of market. Uh, some scans. NXE. NXE is next gen energy. I'd be careful. Got a cross up here at $6.16. Um, it's RSI is at 58. It's in no man's land. I know nothing about this stock. It's just an energy stock that I had in the trading portfolio uh, within um, within TrendSpider showed up on a scan. One that is interesting is GBTC. Uh, this one has a buy. It's a secondary buy. We all know Bitcoin has been flying. The original buy was back here on September 29th. If you got my algorithm, you've made a great trade in GBTC. Because at 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 19 bucks, you're up at 30 now. Now, here's an article from from Seeking Alpha. Bitcoin is booming again. Last chance to snag GBTC at a 13% discount. I'll include this in the newsletter. Uh, Bitcoin's 24 24 halving is expected to lead to a decrease in its actual uh, annual inflation rate, potentially driving the price of Bitcoin up. Every halving has been up. Now, Grayscale's investment Bitcoin Trust, it trades on futures. So when there's a, uh, a, an approval for uh, the ETF, and remember, GBTC won in court. So there will be an ETF of GBTC where it trades on spot value uh, uh, of Bitcoin. When that happens, this author is saying immediately you get a 13% pop in this. 
Now understand, this has been a, a just a great trade. My algorithm makes you 18% in, 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 in GBTC. You lose 44% if you just bought and held two years ago. So the, the algorithm works on this one. The volatility is big in, in GBTC. Understand, read that article. Understand the 13% is just a guess. Doesn't mean that it's going to happen. But we've seen what happens with Bitcoin when there's good news. And that ETF, which is widely expected, probably already priced into the market, hasn't been priced into GBTC. But the market is its own uh, thinking of thinking thing. So understand that GBTC could still be a risk. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. Do do. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Christian, I just like the 10 ton nukes. I just like the username. I mean, I would normally just ignore that kind of comment, but I just like the username. Honest to God, I just like the username. Kudos. Kudos to 10 Ton Nukes. <laughs> um, I, I really like it. And and just the, the, the video. Let's see. Let's go on. 10 Ton Nuke. Let's see. Uh, I like the, yeah. Uh, atheist critique of the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... You want to talk doomsday? <laughs> That's doomsday if you really want to know. I just don't agree with doomsday. Like they say, you know, people who say doomsday coming and blah, blah, blah. I, I don't agree with it. So there's too much hate in the world. Okay, let me hit record again. Okay, since we only had two uh two uh, stocks show up on scans on the four hour um, I decided to do a 65 minute scan of uh, stocks that that are buys in the 65 minute that are in the core portfolio understand when I put this in the newsletter and you have to understand scans when you go to the bottom of the newsletter scans are stocks that are showing bullish trends in the algorithm and they have a buy in the algorithm today so you want to sign up for the daily stock pick newsletter which is right here, and it's free. The daily one is absolutely 100% free. I do a paid one on the newsletter on the weekends. Uh, in fact, I think I might, I'll announce it this weekend. If you sign up for the newsletter, what I might do is if you sign up for TrendSpider this weekend, I might give you a free month of, uh, of the Daily Stock Pit newsletter, the paid one. But um, the 65-minute algorithm that you get on TrendSpider uh, the, these ones are basically a buy. So let's go over because there's only a few and I only scan the daily stock pick core portfolio. So understand these aren't ones that are currently a buy. This scanner gets you ones that are currently in Roblox. Roblox is one. Uh, this is down 0.11. This has a buy at 3805. I don't know that I'd necessarily trust it. Even in 65 minute, you can see this gap on earnings in the 65 minute is starting to get filled. I think that downside of 35, if you're going to buy this at 38, thinking that you're going to 40, again, it's a Friday. I don't know that I'd necessarily buy anything on a Friday. 
But if you're going to try and buy something and time it, if you're listening to this one, I might even buy some puts on a short-term basis on this one just because it's so overbought. Uh, But this one, be careful of, and and this is how you use the algorithm. You kind of look at it and you say, okay, it has me in because the 65-minute algorithm is based on an eight-day EMA. So when it crosses up on the eight-day EMA, you buy. When it crosses down on the eight-day EMA, you sell. But it's a 65-minute candle. So it does trigger a lot of buys and sells. It provides you some sort of uh, safety. For instance, United Health, uh, currently a buy. You bought at 538, you're at 539. The algorithm on this one, you have, um, let's say, 109 positions over eight months. So it's heavily traded because it hugs that eight day. This is one that you don't necessarily want to trade per se on the eight day, but you do make 6%. Now, if you bought and held this one for eight months, you're up 16%. So buying and holding this one works a little bit better. So you want to be careful. But remember, part of TrendSpider is taking emotions out of trades. That's the big benefit of understanding a chart is you take emotions out of the trade. You say, oh my God, uh, you know, Uber, it's at $50.04 right now. Oh my God, it could go higher. Well, yeah, it could go higher. But if the chart tells you to sell, you have to take that as part of the information that you need to get in order to make that decision. You should know, like I know, I said it was going to get here at 50. I started buying at 45, 40, and I started adding to it this entire way. Well, at 50, I got to sell it. I mean, I got to sell it because I do think that we'll probably come back down here to 45. It is oversold. Look at how high the MACD is on that one. If we go to the uh, the four-hour algorithm here and we run it on Uber, you can see we still have confirmation. So I, I'm not necessarily selling it today. I may take a look at it. We're starting to see that button hook. But you can see here, I clearly said, hey, hey, buy it here. I think it's a great price before this earnings because I think it's anything under 50. I think you start a position in. Uh, I thought it was a great buy. I wound up getting it. Hopefully you got in as well. Um, we've had some great picks over the past couple of weeks. Meta. Uh, Of the great eight, I think there's some solid great eight stocks. This is one of them. I think Meta is is one of the biggest ones, 320. It's trading at 319 right now. I continue to say, wait until you can get this under 300. But here on the 65 minute, you got the golden cross. You have confirmation. Um, I I think you continue to go up on this one. If we look at a long term on on Meta and we just go to a, a weekly, you'll see. You've broken through. You almost have a golden cross on the weekly. This one's going to 400. Um, Their next earnings is uh, 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 October. No, I'm sorry. Their next earnings is uh, January 29th. So it won't come until January. They're going to have probably big uh, Christmas sales of the uh, the, 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 uh, Oculus, Oculus stuff. So I like that one. I like that one a lot. And the final one that's a buy on the 60, uh, 65 minute is Disney. You're in it, but it doesn't mean that you're you're in it forever. Again, if you go under that eight day, this green is a nine day EMA. I don't have the e, uh, eight day EMA on the, the chart on the screen, the line on the screen, but you're well above it. So it's just got you in. This one got you in at 84. And you're at 90. You've almost you've probably got your 10% if you just listen to this algorithm. So again, these algorithms, fantastic tools to trade with. If your portfolio is large enough, understand TrendSpider, it's $382 for the year if you take the seven-day trial. It's $300 a year if you just get out of the, the seven-day trial and you use it for a year. What I do is I send you links to my algorithms, the 65-minute, the four-hour. Uh, I'm going to work with Jason from uh, TrendSpider. We're going to do a show next week. Uh, he will show you. He just did a, a one-hour um, chart with uh, Apple. Uh, that shows you a, a little bit how to get in and out of Apple a little quicker. Uh, that has shown in fantastic, fantastic results. My four-hour algorithm in Apple, I, again, it's two candles per day. You don't use after hours. If you are in TrendSpider, understand you don't use either of my algorithms. Don't use extended hours uh, candles. Just use uh, regular trading sessions. So this four hour, it's two candles per day. The the four hour algorithm makes you 40% over 24 months. You buy and sell 27 times. So it's about once a month, just a little bit more than once a month you're trading this. Uh, If you bought and held it, 
you made 24%. So essentially, this algorithm has doubled your, uh, your, your, your win rate. You can see all the green here, all the green. It's a solid, solid uh, winning rate. Your average win is 9.07%. So a stock like this to get 9% as the average on, you can see, I mean, this was a nice 20% run. You got in earlier in the year uh, and you got out. I think you got in out around March. Let's see. Um, yeah. So you got in at the, the January lows, around 127, 125. Nice 17% gain. Didn't get you out at the top there. Saved you a little bit. You could have gotten in when you finally gained confirmation at about 148. The algorithm got you in at 140, 153. Nice 20% gain. Uh, this one... It was clear when we got to 200, that was going to be an issue. And I trimmed a little around, I think around 190, 192, somewhere in that neighborhood. Algorithm got you out with a 20% gain. Uh, got you got right back in at 175 there. Got you out with a 1% gain. You know, you could, what I do with Apple, find the entry points with this algorithm. I don't sell a lot. I just don't sell a lot. And when I say trim here, I sold what, 10, 15 shares, not much. Uh, it was in a retirement account. The majority of my Apple is in my um, in my uh, brokerage portfolio. So it, it creates tax events. But my situation is not your situation. Do not listen to a douche on the internet. So there you have it. Uh, if you're looking forward to the weekend for the paid newsletter, I'll have something out tomorrow. Uh, if you have any questions, remember Linktree has everything. So if you sign up for TrendSpider, what you do is you use this link. You sign up for TrendSpider, get the discount. Then you use this link up here. There's an email just a, a, a symbol of a uh, email. It's like a letter, I think. And, and you send me an email. And that will, uh, that will send me, an, I'll send you back a welcome letter that basically gets you started on TrendSpider with the algorithms in the strategy tester. It gets you watch lists. So down here, strategy tester, market scanner, you get all of that stuff. If you don't use my link, you don't get any of that. So you, you start out from scratch and this is a huge boost up. I can tell you, it took me hours, months, hours of work every day for months to create strategies, to come up with market scanners, everything like that. Also, um, you know, TrendSpider has a discord group that you can join for free. The community is huge. They share a bunch of strategies. They're super giving. So a uh, great opportunity. Again, if you're looking for a Christmas gift, TrendSpider might be uh, on your wish list. The other thing is I would say, say you've got, you know, four or $500,000 in a, a retirement portfolio that you're actually managing stocks. If you want to do a little bit more than VOO and chill and VOO and chill is just an S&P tracking funder and you just want to put, continue to put money in there. That's a great option, and that's what Warren Buffett says. If you want to actually beat the S&P, understand that I have beaten the S&P for many, many years, um, and, and it's basically been the great, the, the great eight. I mean, that's been my, my secret. It's no, you know, it's not if, ands, or buts. I started uh, technical trading because I wanted to avoid the drawdown of COVID. If you are like 10-ton nuke, if you are like Christian on YouTube, and you believe that we're going back to COVID lows, um, yeah, nothing's going to help you. But the algorithm will support you in that if we are going back to COVID lows, that's why the algorithms were built. The, al the four-hour algorithm was built because I didn't want to lose 40% uh, again in a market. And so it helps me understand, okay, we're on our way down. I need to start trimming. So if you want any of that, uh, again, sign up. Uh, I will talk to you guys probably Monday. Okay, say bye. 10 ton nuke <laughs> okay let me go grab my computer Where are these three files? Oh, because I've got... Ah, uh, share, airdrop. Mm. Mm. 
who agrees with 10 ton nuke hey john did i do C cdre for you did i do a good enough job or do you need more information um i probably who's texting me um Are you staying out of it, John? Let's see. Mm, CDRE. Let's see the 65 minute on this one. I mean, that's been a solid stock. Can't argue with that. Mm. Oof. Boy, that's a lot of entries and exits. I mean, here, here's one thing. Take a look at this. Um, sent. Okay, I'm done. The the one day pop here. Look at that volume spike, and that candle was two percent uh, in a 65 minute. That's a big candle in in 65 minute. The earnings came out. This is a 1.23 percent, but you can see the rise in volume. Now you've got confirmation. So 65 minute at 29.63, you're doing great on this one. Um, I just worry again about popping that one up. Mm. Me, I mean, listen, here's my thing. If I don't understand the company's business backwards and forwards and I can trade it, um, I like it. This one, mm, it seems like you do better on a four hour, but I think you're 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 marching up against those fifty two week highs or all time highs. And unless I understand the business, I'm just not sure that it makes sense. Um, here's the all time highs at thirty. Back in October twenty, <laughs> at the at the lows of twenty twenty two, you're at the highs in this one. So, I don't know. It's interesting. Um, <laughs> COVID, Christian. COVID was like shooting in a... I mean, it was like literally like shooting fish in a barrel. I can't overstate how good the, the COVID trading during 2020 and 2021 was. You could literally come out. I remember putting like $100,000 into, I think it was stuff like Fiverr. And, and you know, they'd have news and you'd just shoot up 10% in a day. Um, let's go to a daily and we'll look. We'll move it back to I mean this one's gone down so much since then you can't even see this is still 2021 <laughs> this was 2020 with with Fiverr I mean this was this was amazing I mean look this is 24 dollars. Uh, in in April of 2020, and and you went up to three hundred and four dollars. Ten times your money in, in one year. John greedy on that. Yeah, I I I agree. Greedy is kind of very, it, again. If you want to trade that one, it's near. It's close to. I mean, I hate to, I just don't know enough about the business to say, yeah, it's going to break out. You know what I have been right on? Boeing. Uh, 
Boeing at 179. Look at that. You still got confirmation, 196. Your 50 days turning around. You know what I was right on? Apple. <laughs> uh, it's turning around here. Uh, you still have confirmation. I think you go to 190 on Apple. Uh, you know what I was right on? Cleveland Cliffs. I mean, Cleveland Cliffs, we've gotten, we're close to getting out, but this one went all the way from 15. Uh, like I said, buy it under 15 all day long. It got to 17, 18. Um, Costco, buy it under 500. We're at 566 now. Um, Devon Energy, I've been right in the past on Devon. This earnings cycle, I was completely wrong in holding. Um, should have gotten out of around 48 or so, 46. But, I mean, you can always just add more. I, again, I think 50 bucks. I think this one's coming back to 50 uh, at, at some point in time. Google, get it under 130. I mean, it was under 130 yesterday. Um, it's at 130. 130.88 was the low today. Uh, yesterday and after hours, I think it went down to 128. Goldman Sachs under 300. I mean, you're almost up 10% on that one. The 200 days providing you resistance. Uh, Coke, Coke's an interesting one because it hasn't bounced the way I thought it would bounce before we started to get this this button hook. Um, but that one's right. Meta under 300 all day long. Uh, Microsoft at 330. I, I was yelling, get it while it's on this downturn below the 200 day. It's not going to stay there very long. Right about that one. Netflix, we're almost at 440 on Netflix. I've been buying since 420. Uh, you know, I added some when it got under 400. NVIDIA is up 1.53%. This is at 476. 400, I added more. Um, Oxy, I mean, you're at 61. Uh, I think 63 is 63, 62 is probably the price point to buy on that one. Uh, Pan W. We're at 250. I think at 250 dollars. It, you know, yesterday I was saying buy at 242. You're 249. Palantir. I think we're going to 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 20. Uh, PXD is up 1.2 percent. Uh, I think this one at 234, super inexpensive. Um, Roblox at 27. Anything under 30? Right about that one. Shopify. I still, the jury's still out on Shopify. We're over the 200 day. Down here, we were just too low at 40. Um, we're over the 200 day at 60. Uh, 80 might be a little bit difficult. I, I still have hope, but maybe it's out a little too much. Um, yeah, this one, SMCI, you're at 268. I think you're going to 350 on that one. Tesla, you're up today. And, and it's at 210. Um, I'd be a little bit concerned about this one. I wouldn't buy into it. You've started covering the gap. You still have a gap down to 205 or so. Uber, right? TSM, get it while it's under 100. It's a 94 right now. It's it's just broken above that 200 day. If it holds that 200 day today, get into it. UNH under 500, we're at 540. Uh, VOO at 399. This one's a little bit difficult because I do think 400's providing at VOO. 400's providing a pretty good resistance, but it's it follows the S and P, so it's not you know you can track spy. Uh, XOM at 103. I think you're solid buying XOM at 103. I think you're going to start to see energy take off a little bit. You got your ex dividend date coming up next week, so um, yeah. I've had a good track record here uh, of some, but shit, nobody's always right. Let's see. Let's do an indices check. Um, let me look, and then I'm going to go because I got to edit this all together. I got an 1130 lunch date, Ugh, and I still have to shower. I am up. 0.7% blowing away. I've been blowing away the indices all week, but it's Apple. I mean, it's Apple. Apple's been here. Let's just go over to here and we'll go. And we're going to get out of that. <clears throat> Here's Apple. We'll chart this. Boop, boop, boom. Apple against the S&P will go five day. Look at that. 
We'll go one month. Look at that. You go one day. <laughs> I mean, Apple beat the S&P yesterday. Five day. One month. Six month. Uh, you can see. Year to date. Blowing it away. One year. Mm. I mean, there's a reason Apple is 50% is of my portfolio. And, and, and just like 10 ton nuke, people have been yelling at me. You're crazy. You're out of your mind. Do not have Apple as 50% of your portfolio. Was I wrong? I mean, there were better stocks out there, but I didn't think there was better safety, better safe bets. Now I, I'm not saying going forward, it's, it's a safe bet. It's expensive. Um, it is, you know, hold on the quant seeking alpha analysts don't like it. Dead money at best. <laughs> um, I think it is right. I, I agree with his first point, range bound, high valuation and lack of risk of premium. But you know what Apple has billions of dollars in cash, billions of dollars in cash, um, to buy back stock. I would I I mean buying at what 184 right now I think you're a little bit nuts but adding to it nah you'd be fine 